Here we look at a standard example of applying the time-independent Schrodinger equation to a situation where we have an infinite square potential well with a particle trapped inside of it. And what do we mean by that? Well, if you look at the figure on, on the bottom, and you see that shown in orange is a potential energy which is a well in the sense that between the positions of zero to L, that the energy is, and the energy is on the y-axis, is zero, but then at the position of zero, it goes to infinity, and it also has a, a step function where it goes at L, to infinity. So the way that we write this is the uh, potential energy is V of X is zero when you're inside this position of X is greater than zero but less than L and otherwise it's an infinite potential so that's infinity if i can draw infinity at either x is less than zero and also when x is greater than l so notice here that there's no time dependence in the potential energy V, which is why we can use the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And this condition of going to infinity is a bit extreme. It's roughly approximate an electron in a thin metal wire, where at each end of the wire, then the potential rises very, very quickly. Um, but the real reason why we use this is that um, we're guaranteed that at these boundary conditions they're very clearly defined and we can then satisfy this boundary conditions with a simple sine wave for our wave function. So um, we have that psi of x is a constant a multiplied by sine of kx. Now, why is it a sine? Well, if we look at the boundary conditions, we have that the first one is at x of 0, that psi should be 0. And why is that? Well, basically, we said that one of the conditions for a solution is that it must go to 0 at negative infinity or positive infinity. But because of this extreme potential at the location of x equals to 0, um, there is no energy that could be larger than infinity for the particle. And so the particle truly is trapped and cannot go beyond there. And so for a continuous function, which is another of our conditions, then that means that um, if on just at that barrier, psi also must go to zero if it's zero on the other side of the barrier. So what we can do then is just show that using this sine wave that you plug in x equals to zero and you get a sine of zero, which is indeed a sine of zero is equal to zero. So that's supporting the case that the sine wave is useful.
Um, and we can we can test that as well. We can see that it is a solution. Now the second boundary is at x is equal to l. It's the same thing that psi must go to zero. Now here this is interesting because what this is saying is you have sine of k times l is equal to zero. And how do you get that? Well, if sine is uh, if the argument is zero, we saw that it's zero, but we've already shown that. So for non-zero values, sine then becomes zero again at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, at 4 pi, 5 pi, and so on. So if n is an integer, that is either 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, for all these positive integer values multiplied by pi, then when you take the sine of that, it's zero. So in other words, this then gives you the condition that KL is equal to N pi, where N is one of these integer values, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. All right, and that already tells us quite a lot because you remember that k being the wave number, we can relate to the kinetic energy. And this potential energy function is particularly simple because when you're within this allowed region, the potential is zero, v is equal to zero. So that means, again, that the total energy is the kinetic energy. So we can write that out as the total energy E is capital K plus V. But um, in this region, so I should write within the well, the velocity goes to zero. So that's just K which is, again, this kinetic energy of the momentum squared divided by 2m. And we show the same thing we did before, where we plug in the de Broglie relation. So this is p squared is h squared over lambda squared. And lambda squared is um, 2 pi squared over k squared. So in other words, we can write this as h squared k squared over 8 pi squared m. And finally, um, we can use this relation, that KL, and I should make that look like a lowercase k. I'm not sure if it does now. But we can now substitute that in. That K squared is now equal to N squared pi squared over L squared. And so now we can write this as, I'll use the subscript N to show that now we're restricted to integer values of n squared multiplied by this um, h squared over um, 8m l squared n squared. And I skipped a step of just uh, the pi's uh, cancel, the pi squared's cancel. Okay, so this is interesting. This is telling us that there are 
quantized energy levels that are allowed for this system of the single particle moving in this infinite square potential well. And so then you can have multiple allowed energy levels where n is a quantum number. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And you see that um, this term in front, h squared over 8ml squared, is multiplied by n squared. So as n becomes larger, that energy also becomes larger. And in fact, we'll see that um, when n is equal to 1 is the smallest energy, which we are going to call the ground state.